All right, everyone. Um, thank you for joining today. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started. If you have any technical difficulties um, like I have had <laughs> already today, um, type them in the chat. Um, I do have the chat up and going. I will be able to see that as we go along. Um, I did download my slides as a PDF, but for some reason I'm unable to upload them at the moment. So I will try again at the end of the presentation. Um, I did have um, some tech Nickel difficulties right before we got on here. Um, and so um, I'm using a different computer with different um, options. So I'm trying to navigate as we go. So thank you for bearing with me. If you don't mind, I am recording this session. If you could please all mute your lines, that would be really helpful. Um, there will be a time when I'll ask you to use the chat, but because we may have multiple participants today, again, just go down to that little microphone button at the bottom and mute your lines, please. All right. If you don't want your face recorded, um, you can, sh you can, um, you can uh, uh, hide your screen as well. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. My name is Cara Miller. I am your campus dietitian. I'm really excited to be here with you today. We've added a couple additional um, marketing tips to try to get more people on the line, so I appreciate you coming today. I'm working a little bit more with ETSU and UT Martin, so hopefully we have some people on the call from there today as well. Um, I've been offering these monthly faculty and staff lunches, and I think they've been a helpful way just to get a little bit more nutrition information in your hands in a practical setting. And I did want to mention that um, some of these are included in your insurance benefits. So I know, for example, at Belmont, if you're with Blue Cross Blue Shield, there is some incentives there. I've gotten these classes approved for those credits so that you'll be able to log in and get some of those monetary or additional incentives as well. I also know that multiple universities are allowing some wellness credits or they have a faculty and staff wellness program. So maybe Make sure that you're logging this class for these sessions as well. Um, there can be multiple benefits, not just the nutrition information. So if you're joining us a little bit later, again, my name is Cara Miller and I'm your campus dietitian. I'll have my contact information at the end. This is going to be a little bit more engaging, I hope, than the last time, and we're going to use the chat feature today. So again, if you've joined a little bit later, please mute your lines. I am recording this session, and we'll utilize the chat today um, to correspond with one another. I've got it pulled up on a separate screen here. So let's go ahead and get started. Hopefully you're here for nutrition on the go, and we're going to go over a lot of different tips as, as these schedules start to get busy again. Um, some of the restrictions are Easing, at least with outdoor activities. I know that my two young children are back in sports and raring to go, and so that has made our lives a little bit busy, as well as work picking back up, and maybe you're not working at home anymore. Maybe you are in the office a little bit more frequently, um, and so having that opportunity to really boost up your nutrition on the go is going to be really helpful as we move forward. Um, I am, as mentioned, recording this session. I will be posting um, this to the YouTube channel when we're finished today, but if you go to YouTube and you just type in dietitian Cara Miller, K-A-R-A, -A, um, you'll find all the recordings. So if this is the first time you're joining us and you missed the previous ones, you can, you can listen to those sessions there as well. So today, nutrition on the go, we're going to get back to basics. So I want to go over the funnel effect. If you've joined me for other talks, you'll know what I'm talking about. But otherwise, I just want to make sure that you really are getting a good handle on your nutrition. Um, and what it should look like as an overall meal or an overall snack before we dive into what it might look like for eating out. And we'll talk about the different cuisines I've set up there. And I mentioned it'll be a little bit interactive. So um, I'll have a couple sample menus that we can pull from. And you can kind of give me what you might choose at those restaurants. You'll, I'll have you type that in the chat when the time comes. Um, and then we'll move into some tips from home. So like I mentioned, my kids are back in sports. I know other people are too. Um, maybe you're just traveling, so you're going to be in the car a little bit more. What are some things that you can pack from home to set you up really well on the go? If this is a topic that's interesting to you and you'd like me to go in a little bit more detail, I can make this an additional talk as well. Um, as well as if you have other topics, feel free to send them along to me via email and I'll try to include them for future sessions. 
OK, let's get back to basic. So we're going to talk about the funnel effect and how color, protein and carbohydrates play into this. You might say, Carl, what the heck is a funnel effect? You've never talked about this before. If you've been on my previous talks, you've heard me talk about it. But if you're new, welcome. Let me fill you in. Your stomach is like a giant funnel. You can kind of see on that stomach, the very bottom kind of makes a similar shape to a funnel. So if you think about putting your food in milk or water, if it turns to mush, these are things that are gonna slip through your funnel because your stomach is filled with gastric juices and it makes that funnel um, shape it's not exactly quite this way, but it definitely does work in a similar fashion. So what we want in order to feel full is for your stomach to stretch and go up to your brain to tell your brain that you're full. It takes a little few minutes, but if you don't get that stretch sensation, you don't get that feeling of fullness that most of us are looking for. So again, if you were to take like pretzels or crackers, we've all had cereal that's been left in milk too long. It turns to mush and it's going to slip right through that funnel. So what we want, um, it doesn't create a stretch. It's not helping you feel full. So that doesn't mean that these foods are off limits. That doesn't mean these foods are bad foods. I don't use good and bad foods. All foods are included. Um, but what I want you to think of is that you need to watch those portion sizes because your stomach is not going to watch those portion sizes. Um, so again, kind of thinking about, uh, you know, what should I have then? Well, things that sit in your stomach a little bit more. So if you think about throwing like an apple in water, it just kind of sits there, right? Or a chicken breast or maybe um, broccoli or lettuce greens. Those all just sit in water. So those are things that when you eat them, they're going to fill up your stomach and stretch your stomach to send those hormones up to our brain to tell us that we're full. So I've had someone um, just a few weeks ago, they said, well, Cara, like how many grapes should I be eating? I'm like, I don't know, just eat the grapes. Um, I really want to make sure that we are using our senses, that we are being attuned to our body, that we are listening to what it has to say. Um, if we're mindlessly eating, if we're driving in the car and just eating snacks as we go, um, that's all going to kind of slip right through our funnel. We're not going to feel it. So what you want to really think about is what's going to fill up my funnel with foods that I'm going to feel. Um, so again, crackers, chips, pretzels, cereal, not off limits. We just really want you to watch those portion sizes um, and then try to fill up on things that keep you full a little bit more. So what might this actually look like? I put a portion plate on here. Um, it really is mimicked off of the USDA my plate, which you've probably seen. But for the purpose of this talk, I wanted to kind of have a visual that we can fill up our plate, especially as we're going out to eat or we're planning foods at home. So I just kind of put this one together. Half of your plate should be color. That's fruits and vegetables. So again, these are things that are going to help you feel full, correct? Um, a quarter of your plate is going to be the protein. So that could be chicken. It could be turkey. It could be beef. It could be hummus. It could be beans. Beans kind of fall in that protein carb category, but um, they really do count for both. So make sure you're using them for both. And then a quarter of your plate is carbohydrates and grains. So that might be our pasta or rice. That might be our bread. Um, and these are things that you're going to have to watch the portions a little bit more carefully because they do get a little bit mushy. That does not mean they're bad foods. These are really good foods. Carbohydrates are the main fuel for our brain. They help to fuel our muscles. So as we get more active, as summer temperatures come around, I know our pool opens this summer. I'm super excited that opens this weekend. Um, so as you get into those more activities, you need the carbohydrates to provide your body that energy really fuel you well the other thing we can't forget is the fats and people say oh well, like what kinds of fats I did our heart health talk and I want to make sure that we do healthy fats as much as we can with the avocado and olive oil but let me tell you I grew up in Wisconsin and you can't take away the butter so everything in moderation as I mentioned all foods are included they can all be included as part of a healthy diet um, so I do want to make sure that we're getting in some of those fats now we've all had that salad right where you eat like a salad with chicken on it you're being good today which I don't love the idea of but but we've all had that concept, right? Like, oh, I'm going to be really good for lunch today. So I'm going to have a salad with chicken on it. And you eat it and you feel full, right? Because it fills up your funnel, stretches, tells your brain that you're full. But you have this other side that you're like, I'm full, but I'm not satisfied. Does everyone kind of know what I'm talking about? So that's where those fats come in and those awesome proteins. These are things that really are going to help you feel full and also satisfied. 
Don't forget water. Hydrate and feel great. So I wanted to think, talk about water. I'm not going to talk about it a ton as we go through this talk today, but if you're dehydrated, you really are going to feel more hungry. Our hunger and thirst are right next to each other in the brain. So if we're thirsty and we say, I'm thinking I'm going to have a snack, I'm kind of feeling hungry and you eat something, oh, that really didn't quite do it. Let me try this. Mm, that really didn't quite do it either. Let me try this. Okay, that's your body's way of saying, Cara, you're really thirsty. Drink some water. So if at a base we can drink half our weight in water that's going to set us up really well to better acknowledge our hunger cues so for example if you're roughly 180 pounds you may want to try to drink 90 ounces of water as that number increases you know if your weight is higher than that you might say oh my gosh car that's so much water um the goal here is just to show you that it's not eight glasses or 64 ounces for everyone. We're not cookie cutters. We are all individuals. We all have different needs. So again, comparing our water needs to someone is like comparing our calorie needs to someone. Everyone is completely different. So make sure we're not comparing plates or comparing hydration. Just make sure you're drinking plenty of water. Um, the other thing I like to mention is that your bladder is a muscle. So as you fill up your water balloon over and over, it will stretch. It will get used to having more water in it and you won't pee it as often because that's one of the complaints I guess car I'm drinking more water but I'm peeing all the time um, it will catch up it is a muscle and so the more you use it the more you'll be able to um, better regulate your thirst and also make sure you're really well hydrated without going to the bathroom all the time um, just a reminder if you have your uh, microphone on please turn it on mute thank you all right let's hop into eating out um, a closer look by cuisine. So this is where we're going to get into um, each of the different cuisines and then I'm going to give you some practice as well. So keeping this plate in mind, hold on, I need my drink of water, right? Okay, um, if we're thinking about Mexican cuisine, I have this little plate right in the bottom that we've been using, right? So the whole goal, what I want you to think about is there's no off-limit foods. Every food can fit, especially if you're eating out. And I want you to think about how often you're eating out. If you're going out once a week on a date night, please don't overthink this. This is one meal of your week. There's seven days in a week, three meals in a day, ideally, right? So that's 21 meals a week. If you go out for one of them and you're splurging, having an excellent time with friends or family, don't overthink your nutrition. It's one out of your 21 meals. What we're talking about today really is people that are having trouble because they're eating out for lunch and dinner four or five times a week, which is very common as our schedules start to get really busy, especially if we're not planning ahead a lot or we don't have groceries in the fridge. So um, what I want again is to think about half our plate as color, a quarter of it as carbohydrates, and a quarter of it is protein so that we can get that well-rounded nutrition to stay full but also satisfied and get the nutrition that we need. So again, you can add in those healthy oils. Avocado is wonderful. Aim for grilled options. I know a chimichanga is delicious, but it is fried and dunked. So um, if you can get anything that's grilled or um, less greasy, that can tend to help. Ask for sauces and cheese on the side, and also skip the mindless queso and chips one of my favorites but you can do it in moderation so if you're sitting at a table with friends they bring the chips and queso or the chips and salsa ask for some side plates that's a really easy way to help portion control without being mindless if we just have the chips in front of us we're kind of chipping dunking talking it's awesome super great time but we're not being mindful of our hunger cues and we're typically eating those smushy calories right those chips are the mushy ones they're going to slip right through our funnel so we're not going to feel it so what might you do? Um, you might choose a burrito bowl or a salad with things on it. But what I want you to hear today is that you don't need to get a salad every time you eat out. I want you to think outside the salad box, OK? Because again, we're in the all or nothing. I'm being good. I'm being bad mentality. And by saying like, oh, I'm going to have a salad, we may splurge on something else down the road. So please get out of the mindset of salad is my only healthy option at a restaurant and try to think outside the box. So if we're doing a burrito bowl, of course, brown rice has more fiber, but you can do white rice as well. Fill it up with protein. Again, we got that protein portion. 
So you could do chicken, you could do a lean pork, you could do beans, um, you could do something that's plant based like that. And then half a plate of color, get in the extra veggies, ask for the extra fajita vegetables, right? Um, there's ways that you can just add salsa and you can add, you know, your pico, but you can also add extra veggies by adding in some of those cooked peppers or onions, things like that. You might consider doing a beef taco um, that helps to regulate the portion sizes a little bit and you could just add a side salad with it or the cooked vegetable. A lot of Mexican restaurants even have some form of a cooked vegetable. Um, you could do a taco salad. You can do it here with like the fried shell or you could just do a regular salad and then crumble up your chips on top, right? Um, and fajitas is actually one of my favorite things to get at a restaurant because I can assemble my own. It keeps my hands busy while I'm talking with friends and you really can't overdo it. Um, the thing there is to ask for like queso or guac. Maybe you want to choose two things. So if you have the choice of cheese, guacamole, sour cream, and avocado slices, maybe you want to choose two of those things as opposed to like getting it loaded because that um, the saturated fat is a little bit higher in our things like sour cream and cheese. So maybe you want to choose one thing that's avocado and one thing that's more dairy based. But you know what? Dairy isn't bad either. So if you love cheese and sour cream, um, maybe you want to portion size your other things. So if it all fits in that plate, you just have to rework it a little bit. If you're going to an Italian restaurant, pizza is wonderful. Again, if you're going out for with friends for a restaurant for pizza, don't just get a salad, you know? Um, I think there are many other things that you can get that have plenty of vegetables, but also get you your carbs and proteins and fats. So maybe you are gonna wanna do something like a veggie pizza, or maybe you wanna do your favorite meat lovers pizza, but just have one or two slices and do a side salad um, on the side. You could also do spaghetti. I think a lot of people forget about that, but like kind of your traditional spaghetti and meatballs actually has that tomato based sauce, which tends to be a little bit less heavy um, or calorie dense. Again, when we're talking about sauces, those are things that kind of slip through our funnel, so we may not feel them. Um, so there too. I love Alfredo, so I'm not saying that you can't have a cream base or a cheese base sauce. However, those are things that you might want to watch the portion size of and some of them you can like pick your sides. So you're going to get like a side of pasta instead of your main entree being all pasta. So get that amazing Alfredo on the side with some kind of chicken and then fill it up with all your awesome veggies cooked or raw veg. You can do your grilled options again. You could do a meatball or something though too. Um, and I don't think people, you don't always have to do like a turkey meatball, right? Sometimes the turkey ones actually have more calories than the, than the regular ones because they're adding in so much stuff to keep it moist so it doesn't dry out. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, Ask for whole grains if they're available. Maybe there's a whole wheat bread or a multi-grain bread. Maybe there's a whole wheat pasta you can choose from. And again, always ask for extra veggies. The other thing is soups. So they have this broth-based minestrone soup. That's a great option as opposed to some of the heavier cream-based sauces. But again, kind of keep in mind, is this your once a week eating out, I'm gonna have what I want? Or is this something where you know, you're know you going here for lunch four or five days a week and you need to be more mindful and really focus on that plate graph? Let's stop at a sandwich shop. These are at a lot of campuses now. We've got different subways. Even Einstein would kind of fall into this. Some people have a build your own. I know Belmont has like a corner court, so they've got different sandwich options. And so just kind of thinking about the different sandwich choices you have. Aim for lean proteins. Um, turkey is great, but don't forget about chicken. Don't forget about even ham. Um, things like the like pastrami or some of the salamis, those are higher fat content. But again, kind of keep in mind, is this your go to Monday through Friday for lunch? Then you really want to be more mindful. Is this something you're like driving somewhere on the weekend and you're going to get the meat lovers? then do that but um, everything in moderation but really think about it. okay I'm going to eat here three days a week I really should be choosing something lean um, again focus on whole grains you can get them as a roll um, or sometimes they have the sandwich bread sliced add a healthy oil a lot of places now have some kind of an olive oil um, or just tell them to go light on the oil maybe I know I usually say like I love ranch dressing or mayonnaise so I'll just say just light on the mayo or can I get it on the side and then you can put your own on um, so that you're watching the portions a little bit 
adding lots of color again. You can see this like ham sandwich or whatever is on the side. Just load it up with veggies because you're trying to get half your plate of color. So most of the time, if you have a sandwich, that bread is going to count for that quarter of the plate. The meat on the sandwich is going to start for the other quarter of the plate. The veggies on the sandwich, I would count as maybe a quarter of the plate, depending on what you're getting added. So you still need a quarter plate of color. So adding a side of fruit would be a great option here. Um, I know even at some of our locations, we've got at the sandwich um, station, they've got some of those simply to go items. So they've got some sides. Maybe you want to get carrots and ranch on the side just to boost up your veg a little bit. Water is a great thing to drink. So if you want to do some other beverages as well, just be mindful that those are things again that slip through your funnel, right? Because if you're looking at that funnel idea, liquids go right through. So you won't feel the extra calories or sugar that are coming in. Um, pretzels are a great option. Maybe you absolutely love Doritos like my little boy. And so we're going to get a turkey sandwich um, and add up to extra veg so that he can uh, go to town on those Doritos. So kind of just pay attention to what you really like and think about that. So if we're doing that, let's look at a breakfast option. I'm going to have you utilize the chat in just a minute. Please keep your mics muted just because we do have quite a few people on the line and we are recording. So let's look at a breakfast location and I want you to look through the menu. I'll pull it up in just a minute. I want you to find what you really want. Like if your favorite thing when you go out for breakfast is pancakes, please don't get a breakfast sandwich. Figure out a way to get pancakes in the mix. OK, so think about that. Fill the rest of your plate. OK, so we have this little plate diagram at the bottom. So if you're putting pancakes, how can you make it more of a quarter to a third of your plate? And then what could you add that would be colorful or protein on the side? Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. It has to be realistic. I do not like fad diets that say you do this for a certain amount of time. Hit it hard because you can really do it. It is an elimination diet. You're on the yes, no mentality and you're not learning how to incorporate any food into your diet. So think about it. What is something that's sustainable for you? Like I mentioned, if you absolutely love pancakes, include them when you're looking at this. Or um, if we're looking at the deli sandwich spot, right, like we just went to, um, if you're looking at your all, all, let's see, like the meat lovers or the Italian club or something like that, that might be your favorite. So make that like a Friday special. So then you still have it. You can still look forward to it. And it's not a lack of willpower thing. Um, OK, so we're going to think about what can help you be full what can help you be satisfied and what can help you not feel deprived okay because if you have any of those things that's when we splurge down the road we're either too hungry we're not satisfied or we feel like there's too many food rules and forget it i'm just going to eat what i want so what i want you to do is look at this menu and we're going to go through it. So there's some basics. I actually had a menu pulled up and those breakfast menus are so overwhelming. There was so much writing and so many different things. So again, get back to basics. What are you talking about, right? If it sounds like a healthier choice, just go with it. Um, if that's what you're looking for. I think we get too nitpicky of like, oh, this like veggie omelet, but it has cheese. And oh, should I ask for it with egg whites? Just go for it. Don't make it overcomplicated. Um, unless you have a medical condition, of course, like a milk allergy, you need to avoid the milk, but make sure that you're including all these foods in a way that makes sense and isn't cumbersome because that's not sustainable. So we've got oatmeal, you've got a yogurt parfait, a bagel with cream cheese, you've got a bagel sandwich, a couple different sandwich options where you could choose your meat and a couple veggies to have on your sandwich if you'd like. Um, their specials at this restaurant are a breakfast burrito, um, an egg white veggie omelet with multi-grain toast, buttermilk pancakes, a Monte Cristo, that sounds delish. Um, sides are fruit, potatoes, cheese grits, bacon, sausage, toast with jam, and you have drinks, coffee, orange juice, and low-fat milk. So take a look at that little plate on the bottom, and if you don't mind, just write in the chat um, one thing you might choose. So what would you include to make this well-rounded plate? Just want you to take a minute to think about it. Anyone? Perfect. OK, a breakfast burrito with fresh fruit. I think that's an awesome choice. Monte Crisco, fresh fruit and coffee. That's my husband would get, I think. <laughs> 
Awesome. Breakfast burrito with black beans, having spinach on the side, some kind of salsa. Perfect. That's a great way to get in those vegetables and fruit. And yes, don't forget the coffee. Um, oatmeal with fruit and honey. Yep. I think you guys are getting the hang of it. Um, an egg and cheese sandwich with tomato and then having some fruit and orange juice. That is another way to get in some extra color. Yep. Good, okay, that's an interesting one. So you're gonna do like the sandwich with potatoes instead of bread. Yep, definitely. So that's a great way to get in some other carbohydrates, kind of make mix and match a little bit. Okay, thank you guys, you did awesome. I hope that gives you a little bit of practice, not to overthink it, but like, okay, what do I normally get and how can I just add a little bit of color? Or you know what I normally get is those pancakes and they fill up the entire plate. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask for a side of pancakes where I get the littler ones and then I can get the omelet Omelet, the veggie omelet on the side. I think we're too much in the mindset of like, I'm going all out. I'm going to have all the pancakes and French toast and all the sausage and stuff, which are not bad. It just ends up being carb heavy. Or we say, I'm going to be good and I'm going to only have the egg white veggie omelet with fruit, which if you enjoy that is wonderful. Um, if you don't, or it feels less to you, then don't just get it because it, because you know, it feels like the healthy choice. You guys are doing awesome, excellent. Okay, let's keep going. And we'll go over a couple other restaurants. I can give you one more chance to give examples. Okay, um, an American restaurant or some kind of barbecue, always look for things that are grilled, not fried, um, if you can help it. The other thing I like to point out is the word lean, I'm sorry, loin is equal to lean. So I have that little picture down at the bottom. A sirloin steak is a lean cut. A tenderloin pork, is a lean cut of pork. So if you see the word loin, that means lean. It's on the part of the animal that has a lot of muscle and not a lot of fat. So that can be a good option um, if you're, if it's again, one of your like kind of regular options. Limit some of the cheese and sauces, or again, ask for them on the side. Um, look for whole grains if they're available. That might be brown rice, that might be whole wheat bread, something like that and then add some color. A lot of times when we go out to kind of these American restaurants where it's like a meat starch veg kind of thing, everything is like tan, brown, orange. Or I met with a gentleman last week and he loved barbecue. And so we were trying to figure out how he could get in some color because the only color at the barbecue joint was a broccoli slaw and a coleslaw. Um, I think they did also have a side salad. So we said, well, you could do like the broccoli slaw and a side salad. And then he loved the mac and cheese. So go for the mac and cheese, just do a side of it instead of the whole on tray and then choose a meat base that's a good option or if you don't really care for mac and cheese maybe that's when you do your barbecue pork sandwich where you have the two buns right that's essentially you know a quarter of your plate and then you've got the meat on that bread um, if it's a meat starch veg it's a lot easier to sort out your portions for and make that plate look nice it's the combined foods that tend to get a little bit confusing um, if we're talking about corn um, peas and I'm trying to think if there's others that come to mind. They give you that creamy texture in your mouth. I've had the question before, well, what's like a starchy vegetable? What's an example of a carbohydrate? Um, if you eat a potato and you, you, you know, put it in your mouth, it's real creamy, that's the starch. So sweet potato, regular potato, they're both excellent. They're both really high in potassium. I know everyone right now is going to brown rice and sweet potatoes, which is fine, but the regular are also good, um, especially if you're eating that skin has a lot of fiber in it too. So, um, just kind of think about that the, the potatoes and corn and peas are those starchy vegetables. If you were to eat like a cucumber or a tomato um, or even a summer squash, it doesn't give you that kind of creamy texture. So that doesn't have a lot of those carbohydrates that would count towards your color or your vegetables. So I hope that kind of makes a little bit of sense. Um, add the baked potato. That's a good way to get in some carbohydrates. Um, side salad. They always have the rolls to which are delicious. So you can decide, right? That's kind of what I'm trying to do is empower you to make the decision that's right for you. Everyone is different. Try to get half the plate of color, quarter plate of carb, quarter plate of protein. And you know what? If you went to a third, a third, a third, that's okay too. Fast food restaurant. This is sort of generic, right? Fast food, but try to get a grilled option or a baked option instead of the deep fried. Um, one thing I was thinking about is a single hamburger instead of a double. It's really easy to do like a double cheeseburger because it's so delicious, but even just changing to a single would be a good choice. 
Um, ask for sauces on the side so that you can again regulate those portions. Skip the all or nothing mentality. I already talked about this one, but the next uh, slide we're going to do is another example. So we're going to have you weigh in your options, but um, it's Chick-fil-A. So when I talk with college students, especially there, I say, you know, what'd you get at Chick-fil-A? Oh, I got like the fried chicken sandwich with the French fries and the milkshake. That's super common for everyone to go all or nothing. So I'm going to go all in. I'm going to do the fried sandwich with the French fries and the milkshake, or I'm going to be good and I'm going to have the grilled wrap with a side salad and a fruit cup. Um, I think the wraps are delicious. I also love fruit and I do like vegetables, but that sounds really boring to me. So what I would recommend is choose something that you really want. Like if you love, like me, I love ice cream, my favorite food. I love the milkshake. So I'm going to go for the milkshake, but I might choose the wrap and a side salad or a thing of fruit on the side. Um, or maybe you love the French fries. So then is there a way that you can choose a grilled option um, and some extra color so that you allow for those French fries? So you can do the grilled chicken sandwich, add on those extra veggies. Um, if you don't love love cheese on your sandwiches or you don't love sauce on your sandwiches, choose one or the other. Um, sorry for the bells in the background. My headphones weren't working earlier and so I had to take them out. So we got the echo of the bells. Um, a side of fruit is a good option. They have side salads, even like a yogurt parfait or something like that. And I did mention that if you're going to do a wrap, you may want to choose french fries on the side. So again, kind of getting out of that all or nothing mentality. OK, so now we're going to do one more practice round and then we'll move on to um, tips for eating at home. OK, so we're going to look at Chick-fil-A again. I looked at the menu and I thought about pulling up the actual menu from one of our accounts and going through like the four slides, but it was a lot. And so I thought I'll just condense it. So on the next slide, I've got kind of the basics of what's at those restaurants. So I want you to look through the menu. This is the same as the other side. I want you to see what you really want. Don't just choose the healthy option because you're on a call with a dietitian. OK, I'm a real person too. I really like real food. OK, then um, fill in the rest of your plate. So wherever that favorite goes, fill in the rest of the plate so that you can really make a great choice. Color, protein, starch. Don't be perfect. Be realistic and look at your sustainable nutrition goals. So is it going to help you be full? Is it going to help you be fat satisfied and is it going to help you feel less deprived? We don't want you to feel deprived if you're eating it. All right, let's give it a try. So here we got a traditional Chick-fil-A kind of condensed menu. The tr traditional Chick-fil-A fried sandwich. You've got the grilled sandwich, the spicy deluxe, which is fried, comes with cheese and you can add the veggies to it. Chicken nuggets grilled or fried chicken wrap um, and a market salad with grilled chicken. Then you've got your sides, french fries, fruit cup, side salad, um, potato chips, uh, yogurt parfait, cookie, milkshake. And then you've got your drinks. So you've got water. You could do diet or regular soda, diet or regular lemonade, unsweet or sweet tea. So why don't you weigh in with how you might make up your plate? You can include a drink or you don't have to. I just wanted it to be something we were thinking about along the way. And then I'll give my two cents about drinks in just a minute. Awesome. So we've got um, spicy deluxe with a side salad and fruit. That's a great way to portion up that plate. Um, grilled sandwich, no bread. So some people are choosing no bread, going with the fries or something instead. Um, salad with no chicken. I don't like chicken. I totally fine. So I didn't mention that too much. There is an opportunity here for you to add in some of those plant based proteins, or maybe that would be an opportunity for you to do a yogurt parfait or something. Um, there are many plant based options, but something like a Chick-fil-A doesn't have a ton of them. So that wasn't probably the best example for um, if you're following a plant based diet to choose what your options might be, but it is good practice to think about. So there too, if you're doing like a burrito bowl or a Mexican concept, make sure you're including some of those beans. If you're going out for Greek, you can do like some kind of like a gyro or something, but you can also add in the hummus. Um, get in some of those bean proteins to add in for that protein part. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, all right, grilled chicken with the shake and the side salad. Yep, excellent. Fried chicken with a fruit cup and unsweet tea. I think you guys are getting the hang of it. 
So again, trying to just get away from the all or nothing mentality, really looking at, okay, what, what do you like? Where do the struggles come in? Do you feel overly tempted at these restaurants? Then you may want to look at a menu ahead of time. Don't go in hungry. Um, if you walk into a restaurant and you have no idea what the menu is and you start looking, you're like, oh, that looks good. Mm, that looks delicious too. And now I'm starving and now I can't make a decision. I'm making more of um, like a not necessarily mindless decision, but it's not maybe as informed as you would want it to be. So as you're looking through the menu and you're hungry and you saw everyone else's food, now you really are um, changing what you were maybe coming in to, to order. So um, I also think about it as, you know, you can always go back for seconds. You can always ask for a, something, an extra portion of something later if you still are hungry. Um, you can always take something to go. So think about that. If you've got um, a restaurant where they give big portions, I always actually recommend sharing with somebody always. Um, the other thing you could do is when you order, ask for a to-go box as well. Just say, hey, I'd like this. I'm probably not going to eat it all. If you don't mind bringing a to-go box when you bring my meal, that would be wonderful. And then what you can do is actually put some of that meal in the to-go box so that it's not as tempting. And if you do decide to go into that box, then it's you know, that's a mindful decision. If you're still hungry, you would like a little bit more, then you could do that. But sometimes um, a half portion at some of these restaurants that serve giant portions is enough and to feel satisfied. Um, the other thing you can do, I mentioned, but to ask for sauces or dressings on the side. Um, when you can put it on yourself or kind of use your tongs, or your fork to get on each of the, the bites you're gonna have, um, that can be really helpful as opposed to them dressing something and then you're not able to control those portions. But um, again, keep in mind, I meant if you've joined a little later, if, uh, there's 21 meals in a week, right? So if you mess up a couple of them, I shouldn't even say mess up. If you have a great time with family and friends and you choose, you know, your favorite options, uh, I think it will be just fine. So try not to put too much pressure on yourself. This really is for those who are eating out really frequently um, and need to make healthy decisions along the way. Okay. So different tips for at home. Again, we're sticking to this color, protein, and carbs concept, but we do need to plan ahead. So you may have things like a cooler bag, um, plastic cups with lids. So I didn't put a picture of that, but like, um, you know how you get like the grape cups or whatever? You can get those little plastic cups with lids and you can even get those similar at the grocery store. Those are nice because they fit in your center console. So if you're going on a road trip, you can easily put those right in your cup holder with your snack in it or your fruit in it or your veggies and dip in it. And that's a good way to, um, to keep it from spilling all over the place. You can even put a little of the dressing or the hummus at the base of the cup and then put your sliced veggies on top so it gets a little on each one and then when you're you know getting your carrot stick uh it'll have a little ranch on it as you're dipping and that way it doesn't make a mess of your car Tupperware containers are also really handy. I like the ones with the dividers in them, but you can also make your own dividers um, or sections by using mason jars, or I did put pictures of these little silicone dividers on there. If you've gotten the little, um, like those, the silicone muffin tins, those are excellent. I use those in my kids' lunches all the time so that they can separate each of the different areas. It doesn't work well for dressing, but it will keep, you know, your carrot sticks away from your pretzels or whatever. Um, trash bag is also helpful, especially if you're on the road so again thinking about going to ball games thinking about traveling to the beach things like that keep a trash bag so your car doesn't fill up with any extras um, utensils paper towel or napkins of course is really good um, and water bottles so we're going to talk about a few more things to kind of keep it handy as you go along but those are just a few things that you'll probably want if you don't already have Okay, grocery list. So you want things that are easy to throw together. And these are things too that if you're going to the beach and you have like a little kitchenette or something when you get there, this can be really helpful. Or if you're again going to ball games or something like that, you can keep this stuff right in your fridge or even your mini fridge at work, few of them, so that it's easy to just kind of grab and go, assemble as you go. So things you might want to think about would be pasta, microwave rice. Those are really shelf stable, really nice. Pita bread or wraps or breads. One of the things I found is sandwich cake bread gets really boring. So if you're making sandwiches and you're making a turkey sandwich, 
over and over and over or a peanut butter sandwich over and over and over. It just gets really boring. So changing up those breads can be really helpful in not getting bored because when we get bored, we feel deprived and when we feel deprived, we splurge. So again, trying to make sure that things stay interesting, give yourself different textures, different flavors, um, and again, using different breads. Though they have those like artisan breads you can get at the grocery store or the take and bakes are really nice. So any of those can just change up your same old turkey sandwich so it doesn't feel the same all the time. Again, speaking of changing things up, look at your proteins. So I love like the oven roasted or the smoked turkey, of course, but think about a Cajun turkey. Think about spicy tuna packs or all the different tuna packs, those sun-kissed or star-kissed, you know, the blue packs I'm talking about. They have all different flavors now, so it really is not your grandma's casserole. Okay, um, hard boiled eggs are really handy. You can boil them all on the weekend. They stay in the fridge for one week. Just make sure you mark which ones you've hard boiled so you don't crack the wrong one by accident. Um, but those can be really helpful in planning some kind of sandwich or even just taking the hard boiled eggs as part of like a bento box, kind of those boxes that are sectioned sort of like what you get at Starbucks. You can make those yourself. I'm gonna show you a few examples in just a couple slides. Grilled chicken is also really helpful. Um, so let's see. I'm going to show you grilled chicken tip next. OK, fruit. Think about the week. If you only get berries, they're going to go bad three days after. So think about getting berries that will last you three, maybe four days. Then you've got to have something for after that. Bananas and grapes are good for that. You usually get the bananas green anyway. They take a couple days to ripen. Grapes stay firm for a little bit longer than berries do. And then have some apples and oranges. So as the week goes on, you don't have to run back to the store every time. Apples and oranges keep for a couple of weeks in the fridge. So thinking about your fruit throughout the week week is really helpful. Vegetables, again, anything kind of crunchy or anything that holds up well is going to be good for these kinds of boxes or to go lunches or to go dinners. Um, bell peppers, carrots, those snap peas are in season right now, which I just love. Um, different lettuce greens, of course. Tomatoes are great, but again, if they're sliced, they make everything soggy. So it kind of depends. You can pack your sliced tomato in a Ziploc bag to put on your sandwich later, or if you're going to eat your sandwich in an hour or so, it'll be fine. But if you're packing it in the morning for what you're going to eat that night and it's going to be in a cooler bag, you would like to keep that tomato separate. The other thing you could do is cherry tomatoes. Those are kind of poppable, so those are easy to take with you on the go. Think about convenience. If you want to pack your own things or make the little mason jars of dressing, etc., that's wonderful. Some of us just don't have the time. So again, if it's not practical, don't make it a part of your main routine or it will not happen. So if it helps you to buy individual packs of ranch or salsa or the little guacamoles or the little hummus containers or the little peanut butter packets, take those. Spend the extra couple of cents to get those to simplify the process and save some of your other money the other way. Honestly, by bringing your food with you, you're going to save more money than eating out anyway. So if you can get a few of these extra things, that can be really helpful. Sides as well. So if you're just thinking about a sandwich, that's great, but you may not have enough to sustain you longer term. So the applesauce squeezy pouches are great or the cups with a plastic spoon um, or you can use a reusable spoon. Of course, right now we've gotten in the COVID world of everything is disposable, which has its pros and cons for sure, especially for the environment, the cons. Um, yogurt is wonderful as well. Again, individual packs of yogurt or if you have the energy, you can get a big container and scoop it out. But a lot of people just don't have that time. So don't put that as your main thing to do. Add in one thing at a time so it's not overwhelming. String cheese is really easy. Get some kind of chips or things that you like on the side. Those little kind bars are excellent for like a little dessert or something that tastes good at the end. Um, goldfish packets, again, they come individually packed, so those are really nice. And drinks as well. So just kind of thinking about either you can buy a packaged drink or you can buy those little flavor enhancers as well. Um, there are things like the Crystal Light, which is fine, um, or you can use something like a True Lemon or True Lime. It's, um, it's a crystallized lemon juice, so it's just lemon juice. They've just dried it out. So so when you put it in, it actually just tastes like your water is infused. Um, I forgot to mention after our Chick-fil-A thing about the diet drinks and things like that. 
So diet is not necessarily bad. Um, it can mess with our gut bacteria a little bit. The other thing that I've found is people that use a lot of diet drinks or diet sodas or diet any of the artificial sweeteners it actually increases your tolerance for sweet. So one cookie is not going to feel like enough. If you're having a ton of artificial sweeteners, you're going to want two or three or maybe four because you're just wanting more sweet. It just increases your tolerance. Um, just like when you take out sodium out of your diet for a few days, if you You've gone to the doctor they said high blood pressure you cut it all out then you add in a normal food you're like oh my gosh it's so salty you'll find similar experience with the diet sodas if you're taking them out for a long period and then you add them in you're like oh my gosh it's so sweet i had no idea um so you can resensitize your taste buds but just kind of be mindful of that Okay, I mentioned chicken. So this is my chicken hack i actually learned it in college so if you have any young adult you know, family members, get them on the bandwagon too, because what you learn and what you can use in college really will stick with you. So um, chicken four ways, take a gallon bag, four of them, put one or two chicken breasts in each, depending on how many are in your family, how much chicken you're gonna go through, and then fill them with different seasoning blends. So maybe number one is gonna be balsamic with Italian seasoning, number two is gonna be teriyaki with soy sauce, or those peanut sauces are great, or maybe you have a favorite like sesame ginger salad dressing, all of those make a great marinade, a lemon juice and lemon pepper, and then a salsa of Southwest of some kind, okay? If you've got four of them all lined up, you can leave them one night overnight in the fridge, and then you can either put them on a cookie sheet like I've got pictured here. You put aluminum foil on your cookie sheet, then put a metal rack on top, spray it with Pam spray or whatever anti-stick spray you've got, and put each of the different ones on there all at once. Don't do balsamic first and then teriyaki. Don't. All at the same time. That's what the rack is for, so that all the drippings go down so that they each keep their own flavors. Does that make sense? So now you've got chicken for the week. So that's amazing because now that's one of the things that takes the longest as you're kind of preparing your meals and going along is like, well, I've got deli meat or I've got to unthaw the chicken. Ooh. So then you run out of options. So having something prepared is really easy to kind of throw together. The other thing to think about is taking your crock pot and making a well in it with aluminum foil. Just make sure the aluminum foil makes a really good bowl on both sides, and then you can put one in each. You won't be able to fit all four probably, but you can fit one bag on one side, one bag on the other side, and that again keeps the sauces separate so you can cook them at the same time. Um, and then you've again got chicken for the week super helpful. So what do we do with this? Well, if you've got your balsamic chicken, you can add it with rice and veg. You've got a composed meal. You could do a chicken salad, chop it up, put some, you know, mayo, a little Greek yogurt in there. Yum. You could put it on top of pizza. Maybe you want to take a tortilla with a little pasta sauce, some spinach, some of that chicken and shredded cheese and put it in the microwave or put it on the broil in the oven. That makes your own little individual pizza. Um, teriyaki, so that could make a great stir fry. You could do a pasta toss. I'm going to talk about that one next. Um, I mentioned those pita sandwiches. Those are excellent. The other thing that I highly recommend are those um, salad slaws that you get in the grocery store. It's not necessarily like the salad toss, like a Caesar, but it's got kind of like the coleslaw mix. There's got some now, it's like an avocado chipotle. They had another one that was like a kale salad with like some craisins and stuff in it. They're all different. So look, take a look and pick out two or three of them because what that is really easy for is if you've got your meat already or your deli meat in a pita, then dress just a little bit of that so you can keep it in the fridge, the lettuce on one side, and then if you take a bowl, you know, just like a bowl, and you put your salad dressing in it, that bag that you get. Um, I'm sorry, from Wisconsin, I realized I just said bag. Um, but if you put your bag in it, you can top off of the top and it won't tip over in the refrigerator. Just put a little dressing on the slaw, kind of mix it together a little bit and put that in your pita. And now you've got the veg already. So you don't have to do your tomato and your peppers and your all your things. Um, you can just do like a slaw in there. And that's really tasty too, because it comes with a dressing that you're probably not normally buying. So that feels Feels like variety also. Um, lemon pepper, you can make a chicken salad sandwich. You could do the cold rice uh, salad. So you like cook up your rice, put in the chicken, some veggies, and put in a favorite sauce, kind of toss it up and serve it cold, which is great for summer. Um, and again, you can put it in a Tupperware container, put it in a cooler bag, and it goes right with you, ready to go. 
um, salsa or that Southwest chicken. You could easily make into fajitas. You could do a chicken salad. You could do that rice bowl I was talking about where you just, again, take a microwave bag of rice. You put the chicken on top, have some veggies or pico dinner. Delish. Easy peasy. Okay, so here's a sample menu. Um, you could do a pasta toss. What do you need? You just need some cooked up pasta. You could use whole wheat if you want or regular is fine too. Um, even zucchini noodles, right? They're not going to hold up as well in a sauce, but um, they would be fresh and nice if you wanted to use those. You could even just noodle them without cooking them really, um, and that would probably work well, especially if it's going to be in sauce for a little bit. A peanut sauce with a teriyaki. This is like an Asian kind of pasta toss I did here. Um, plain chicken or the diced we just made, right, from that teriyaki chicken that you've already made for the week. Um, and then all your veggies. So I did some of the veggie prep in our last talk. But again, you can dice up peppers ahead of time, put them in a Ziploc bag or a container with paper towel, because if you don't, they get slimy. Carrots are the opposite. If you're going to do carrots, you want to make sure you keep them in water, otherwise they dry out. Um, so if you have questions about that, um, I'm going to allow a few minutes at the end for questions, and I can help go over some of those again, or you can listen to the previous talk as well on some of those veggie options. Okay, build your own sandwich. I mentioned mix it up a little bit. So with a pita, maybe you do a Cajun turkey with that slaw mix I was talking about with a chipotle ranch or like an avocado chipotle, something like that. Um, Italian bread or some kind of nice loaf with a roast turkey and spring mix and some kind of Italian dressing. You could use a whole wheat wrap with chicken and veggies. Again, you can just kind of mix and match, but I think you want to flavor the cuisines differently, get different sauces in there. Otherwise, that's when you get really bored. Um, egg or chicken salad. Leave the dressing off if you can, and um, don't forget some sides. So we've talked about those also. A few more ideas. Um, I'm going to scan over here to the super healthy kids I mentioned at the last one. So let's hop over here and I'll show you. But sheet pan dinners, I went over. The super healthy kids is great. Um, it's a great website, um, easy to use, very familiar ingredients, usually not tons of ingredients because it's made for busy people on the go with picky kids. Um, so I found this website really helpful, even for adults, even for college students. It's very colorful. It gives you a lot of great ideas. Their sheet pan dinners, you can just search at the top sheet pan dinners it comes up with the top 16 sheet pans so what that means is you put your meat your veg your starch all on the same cookie sheet put it in the oven set it forget it 20 minutes just like a pizza all done freezer meals are great they do take a little planning ahead but that's when you could use the instapot or the crock pot as long as you've got all those ingredients in the ziploc bags um, in the freezer you can just take them out dump them in turn on your crock pot ready to go. Um, the only other thing I'll mention before we hop over to the super healthy kids are the microwave options. Um, Kari didn't really talk about using the microwave. Well, there's the individual bags of rice that I think are really helpful. The other thing to keep a few of would maybe be something like these power bowls. I'm not trying to be brand specific, but these ones taste good. They have a good amount of vegetables. Remember, we're trying to do half a plate of veg, quarter starch, quarter protein. These are pretty balanced. You just might need to add something to it, add some color to it, add some fruit, add some veggies, um, and that would be great. The power bowls that are black are the well-rounded ones that have got the whole grains and things like that. Okay, let's hop over here. Okay, I mentioned they've got recipes up here. You can search by Instapot. You can search by um, one pot sheet pan. Those are those sheet pan dinners, freezer meals. They've got all this stuff on here. If you've got grandkids coming over for the weekend, they've got popsicles and frozen treats that are great for summer. But under the lunch category is this one that I found kids lunch, um, 90 healthy lunches. Now, if you go on Pinterest, they've got all kinds of like decorative things, right? I can't, I don't have time. So anything simple is good for me so what I'll show you here you can even see a few of them but they've got like kind of um pizza on a stick sort of like pepperoni mozzarella some pasta like um rotini noodles or like the um oh gosh I'm blanking ravioli kind of type thing okay tortellini um and they've got the pasta sauce they've got the wraps with some veggies and fruit you've got to kind of build your own sandwich they've got the mini bagels with like different things that's another great option kids are they're easy they're small enough for kids too so as you scroll down there's just a lot of different options that you can choose here's like a pb and j on a waffle i think that's really innovative but not time consuming you can use a freezer waffle for that they have the whole grain options and this is good for adults too so i know these are 
are for kids, but these will be great to take to a ball game if you're going to watch your grandkids play play ball or something. OK, all right, let's see. Um, other things you could do a nut butter or hummus with pretzels and zucchini or something like that. Some veggies um, and some fruit. Again, half a plate of color, quarter plate of protein, quarter plate of starch. So this already portion controls when you've got these little kind of bento boxes, I'll call them, but the little portion control. Here's a wrap again. Here's one of those like kind of pasta toss. Add some fruit on the side. Good to go. Super easy. You can keep that pasta really fresh. Doing a little yogurt parfait in one of the wells can be really easy to do as well. So I hope that gives you a few ideas. You can look through this. I did put that link in the chat as well. So let's hop back over here. Um, and before we go, I have to mention some of our on campus options. I know we talked about some of the restaurants, but other things to consider that bite app that you've got at each of your universities. If you download it, you can search by location. It'll find your school. The next thing it will do is it'll pull up the dining hall menu under menus, but you can also look at um, the retail locations. If you've got locations on campus that are kind of like your campus restaurants, most of them now are doing an order ahead and a pickup grab and go. That's that's really helpful for saving time. You can put it in on your way out the office, swing by the restaurant, grab it, hop in your car, and again, head off to a ball game or something like that. If you're looking for lunch options or again, easy and go options would be some of our simply to go. They have sandwiches. We've got the little fruit cups. We've got the veggie cups. We've got the pita cups with the hummus. Um, they've got the salads. So a lot of great options there too. Those are made fresh daily. So those are great options to keep it fresh. Keep it easy. You can use your dining dollars that way. If you haven't put any on your ID, I highly recommend that. It just gives you a lot of flexibility on campus. You can add dining dollars. Um, each account calls them something different, but it's essentially the campus cash. And you can also link that to the Byte app that I mentioned here um, so that it will pull those declining dollars or the I don't know the campus bucks um, when you're paying. So you can use a credit or debit or you could use that payment also for the campus cash. I am going to try one more time to put this in the link. I just don't think it's working. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and stop sharing. OK, excellent. Um, oh, I see a question here. I'm sorry I missed it. On the microwave meals, I notice most are high in sodium. Do you have a brand that might recommend lower sodium and get back to me later on this topic? Um, I don't have a specific brand that's lower in sodium, but I was just working with um, a faculty member the other day who was looking for low sodium and I did find a bunch of great websites. I don't remember them off the top of my head, but I am happy to send those to you if you just send me an email. Um, so let me make sure I turn my video on. OK, hopefully I'm there, um, but if you send me an email, I'd be happy to share those with you. Yep, excellent, excellent question. OK, another question. I found that organic ones tend to be lower in sodium. Yep, Trader Joe's does have some. I know Whole Foods does have some, but again, if you're looking on a budget, that can be a little bit tricky. Um, I was going to also mention the Mrs. Dash seasonings just as part of seasonings. They're actually one of my favorites and they are lower sodium as well. So I do highly recommend those. Um, they have like a Fiesta. Southwest something. They've got a chipotle. They've got a lemon pepper. They've got a garlic herb. So it's not your grandma's Mrs. Dash anymore. They do have a lot of excellent, excellent flavors. Perfect. Um, let's see. Mrs. Dash is great. We love the garlic herb. Yes, I do too. Bread is my weakness, although I do not eat it at every meal. Is that too much? I do eat it every day. Yes, bread is totally fine. Gluten has gotten a really bad rap lately, and that's just a trend. I'm being totally honest. Um, 10 years ago, 10, 20 years from now, I think we're going to look back at the gluten-free fad as kind of the low-fat dressings. Um, we're going to look back and say, no, they're fine, but um, I don't think that was the end-all be-all. I don't think this is the one thing that's going to help us. Now, that does not pertain to people with allergies. If you have a wheat allergy or you've been diagnosed with celiac disease, I obviously, of course, recommend meet your physician requirements and avoid those for sure for your health concerns. But for those who um, 
are just trying to avoid gluten. Um, it just kind of depends on why you're avoiding gluten. So maybe it's the breads um, and a bread isn't bad. We've been eating bread for hundreds of years and they're excellent. So um, I do recommend though, if you can to do a whole grain bread option as much as you can, right? The white refined is excellent. As if you're going on a date, you're doing Italian night and you want to do like your Italian bread, awesome. But if you can do a whole grain, and I've gone through this before, but whole grain means that you're using the whole grain. So you're using, um, my, my video I don't think it's showing anymore. Let's see if I can get rid of this. Um, if you can get rid of the, I lost my video. I'm sorry about that guys. Um, the whole plant so that it has the inside and the outside, right? Um, I'm going to just share back my screen so that you guys have something else to look at. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. OK, so the whole grain um, is like that whole pod kind of thing. And then if you go into a multigrain, it just means it's multiple grains. So that doesn't mean that it's um, whole grain it just means they've used more than one and then white bread falls beyond that so you're looking for the fiber you're looking for the whole grains as much as you can i know everyone talks about ezekiel bread but i wasn't sure so ezekiel bread is a whole grain it's very nutty um to me that's not bread i just personally i can make a sandwich with it occasionally but that's not something that i regularly am gonna like pack in my kids lunches or something um and so it, it can be a great option it's very flavorful if you enjoy it but don't hold yourself to that if you like the other kinds of bread as well the whole grains are are great options um I found that some meal subscription services help me. Yeah, this is excellent. So there are a lot of meal subscriptions. Some of them are better priced than others. So you have to find one that's in your budget um, and also your time. Um, some of them require just kind of assembly and heat. Some of them really require a lot of cooking. So kind of just look at your skill set and also how much time you have to give to it. And some of those meal subscriptions definitely can be good options. The other thing I didn't mention, but I always <laughs> try to mention is the grocery delivery systems. I think it's just because I'm I'm a busy mom, but those are a lifesaver. So when we're talking about having appropriate things in your fridge so that you're making better choices, if I can skip the grocery shopping and really um, and really make sure I have the right stuff in the house, that is so helpful to me. So um, choose which one, again, works best for you. I know that there's like ClickList through Kroger. There's now Aldi does pick up. I use Instacart. There's a lot of great options, not limited to one, um, but they can really help save some time and get good groceries. Uh, in your refrigerator. Any additional questions? I was going to see if I could post the slides, but it wasn't. Um, if you log on a little later, I am going to put it in the chat, and I do think you'll be able to access the chat if I'm not mistaken. So I apologize for that. I did, I, as mentioned at the very beginning, I had some technical difficulties right before my computer completely shut down, so I had to use someone else's um, laptop for the moment. So I appreciate you bearing with me as we go forward. If you have um, topics you'd like me to talk through, let me know. I would also like feedback on if you'd like summer sessions. At this point, it seems like a lot of people are going on vacation. People have a lot of other things going on, so I believe I will start these back up again in August or September, but I would like your feedback. If you think it's something you'd like me to do over the summer, um, I may even post just like a 10 minute video and send those to your marketing people so that you can listen um, just to kind of a quick tips on grilling or something like that, um, as opposed to doing a whole lunch and learn. But if that is something that you'd be interested in, just let me know so I can get an idea on attendance. Any other questions? I appreciate you tuning in with me today. My Instagram account is here. If you are on to Instagram, give me a follow at dietitian underscore Cara. Otherwise, um, please shoot me an email. If you have any questions, if you'd like a copy of the slides, send me an email. I do have it as a PDF. I just, again, had technical difficulties, so I apologize, but send me an email. I'm also gonna post this to my YouTube link. So um, if you go to YouTube and you search dietitian Cara Miller, K-A-R-A, -A, you'll find my YouTube channel and I will post this recording there as well in case you have someone else who wanted to listen or someone else uh, you want to take a look at the slides again.